Do you have the Canon EOS R5 Mark II? Do you shoot video? Do you have trouble importing media when using Final Cut Pro? Well, I've discovered an issue where Final Cut Pro will not recognize the new cinema file format. It won't provide thumbnails or allow scrubbing and set the in and out points for importing your media. The good news, I found a very simple and free two-step solution. But first, I have a simple and humble request. Please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps this channel grow, but most importantly, it keeps you up to date on the latest camera gear. This is the 330 gigabyte Angelbird card that I've been using inside the EOS R5 Mark II. And I formatted the card inside the R5 Mark II. And this is the same card that I've been using with the Canon EOS R5, the Mark I for, well, probably anywhere from one to two years. And it hasn't caused me any problems. In fact, if I take that same card and put it inside the Canon EOS R5 Mark I, format it and start shooting video, I have no problems. Final Cut will load it up. I'll be able to see the thumbnails. I'll be able to scrub and set in and out points. But on the R5 Mark II, it's a different story. Here, let me show you what happens. Once I put the card inside my Mac, Final Cut Pro won't let me see the thumbnails. And this makes it very difficult to see what the files contain. Making matters worse, I'm unable to set the in and out points. So this creates several problems. Now, the first one, and this is the biggest one of all, is it takes an awful lot more time to process the information, to process the files. I can't see the thumbnails, so it's really not possible for me to know exactly what's on the clip. My memory isn't that good. Second, because I can't scrub the files and I can't set the in and out points, if I've got longer videos or longer files of, let's say, anywhere from five to 10 minutes, but I only need a 10 second piece, I have to load in the entire clip. And for some larger projects, that can add an awful lot of time to processing, to importing. And it's just really frustrating and it doesn't make any sense. Why is this a problem? Well, I don't know why it's a problem, but um, I do have a solution. So that's coming up. But before we get to the solution, let's explain the landscape. I freshly formatted the 330 gigabyte Angelbird AV Pro CF Express card generation three inside the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. They're all loaded in the XFVC folder in real 019. And if we take a look at DCIM 100 EOS R5, there's nothing there. There's no images, no CRM, no JPEG, no HEAF, just those three video files and their corresponding CPF files. And those three video files, well, they're shot with the Canon EOS R5 using 4K Fine with Canon Log 2. There's nothing special about them. I haven't done any processing to them. Basically, I only shot, and they're about two to three seconds each, three short files. It's just to prove this point and to um, set up the solution, which is actually pretty simple. It's a two-step process. You don't have to download any software. It's so simple that um, hopefully as this video gets out there, Apple will see, aha, uh -huh, and they'll provide a fix pretty quickly. Being able to scrub the clips to see thumbnails and to set the in and out points for importing is very important. So despite the fact that I'm not able to do that with this card, this Angelbird AV Pro SE 330 gigabyte card inside the R5 Mark II formatted with the R5 Mark II with three short video clips, I'm gonna show you a very simple way to um, change all that. The first step, take any clip, any clip at all, and move it into the 100 EOS R5 folder in DCM. It doesn't matter which file you move, it can be the first one or the last one, the smallest one or the largest one, or it can be one with the file name has most of your lotto numbers in it. It doesn't matter, just move one of them into the DCM folder, 100 EOS R5. And the second step, simply rename that file to 380-alpha-4618. Then load up Final Cut Pro, choose Import, and there you go. Now you can see the thumbnails, set the in and out points, and import. I know what you're thinking. Do I actually have to rename the file? Can I just move it into the folder 100 EOS R5? And yes, you do have to rename the file, but you don't have to use 
the, the file name that I gave you. You can use any EOS R5 Mark I file. It could be, what did I choose? 380, it could be 390, alpha, 5218. It just has to be an EOS R5 Mark I file naming convention. That's it. And, and the other question you might be wondering, well, what if I just rename the files where they exist already in real 19, for example, and XF is, X, no, it's XF AVC, it's, What's the name of the folder again? It's, where is it? XFVC, can you just rename the file there? Um, no, that won't work. You can rename it there, but you still have to move it. So you have to do those two steps. And then all your videos, with, including the renamed one and moved into the 100 EOS R5 folder, as well as all the other ones in the XFVC folder, they're available to you, the thumbnails, in and out points, scrubbing, all of it. A little bit strange, isn't it? I, this problem has been bugging me for months. And the first time I called up Apple, their support talked to them and they said, yeah, it's a Canon problem. And I told them, no, it's not. Because you see, by simply copying a file and renaming it, it's got nothing to do with the container nor what's with inside the container. Because once I've moved it and renamed it, everything works perfectly fine. So this is an Apple problem, not with Mac OS, but with Final Cut Pro. So hopefully this video will help uh, get a bit more attention to this. I think it's just, I think it's just a bug. I think somebody made a change and uh, it's some sort of if then logic statement. Now, have I left anything out? Uh, any other notes here? If this is a container, yeah, we talked about the container. Um, yep, yep, uh, reach out to Apple. Oh, yes, and actually I did reach out to Apple a couple of times and the last time was about a week ago so they've got a ticket on this. I haven't heard back them in a while. They're, it's being escalated, but hopefully this video will get some attention. Um, now, what I had done previously is I'd just taken one of the video files I shot with the ER5 Mark I. I think it was just a one or two second clip. It doesn't have to be long. And I copied it to my desktop and I just kept it there. So if I put a card inside the ER5 Mark II, this guy right here, and I put in a new card, for example, the new two terabyte Angelbird AV Pro uh, CF Express B V4 card, put it inside here, formatted it, started shooting, and I got back and I forgot, oh yeah, it doesn't recognize it. So all I had to do is copy that file from my desktop right into the 100 EOS R5 folder in DCM. And then I was able to access all the thumbnails and do the scrubbing. And it was in that situation that it really reminded me how difficult it is. Because sometimes I'll come back with a couple of hundred video files. And if all you're presented is with the files and the time, you can go, well, okay, at this time, I think I was shooting this, but you're not sure. Not having those thumbnails, that's huge. And not being able to scrub the files, that's even more frustrating because then you have to load them all up into Final Cut. And guess what? Once they're in Final Cut, you can scrub them. You can set in and out points and then move them into your timeline. So it didn't make any sense to me. Uh, one other thing you might notice too, um, let's cue that clip one more time. Take a look here. This is where we can't see the thumbnails. You'll notice that when Final Cut recognizes the storage, it recognizes it under devices. And when we can see the thumbnails and do the scrubbing, you'll notice that the card is mounted as camera. And I have no idea why Apple does this. Uh, for example, if I have video files on other storage media, why can't I see the thumbnails? Why can't I set in and out points? It doesn't make any sense. It almost seems like this is arbitrary. So have you encountered this problem? Because I put out a video about a month or two ago and I didn't get an awful lot of feedback about this. It almost seems like I'm the only person out there using Final Cut with the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. And I'm sure that can't be the case. Let me know your experience um, in the comment section down below if you're having this problem. And um, if the fix is working for you, um, just uh, some other information. I am using Mac OS, the latest version. I'm using Final Cut, the latest version. So everything is up to date. And um, I've been working with this since August the 20th when I got my R5 Mark II. So I also worked on some older versions of Mac OS and Final Cut since August the 20th. And the issue didn't change. So hopefully now, this video will help shake things up at Apple and they'll provide a quick fix. I don't think this is a very difficult fix to add, but it might be part of a whole series of other fixes and enhancements they might release in a later version of Final Cut Pro. 
But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great weekend, a great long weekend, especially if you're watching here in um, the Great White North, which, oh my God, if you're anywhere north of, I think, Virginia, up into Canada, um, we're having a bit of a one, two, three punch. We've ha already had some incredible storm systems. And there's another one coming up on the weekend, starting Saturday, continuing into Sunday. Um, if you don't have any, if you don't have a snowblower, get one um, and make sure you've got it gassed up and ready to go because, um, yeah, we're getting ready for a major storm. And thankfully, I have Monday off here, so I don't have to worry about it. But my wife has to go to work on Sunday. And that's when the snowstorm is supposed to be at its worst. So we'll just have to wait and see. Anyhow, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Watching this channel and commenting is very much appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe. It really does help this channel grow. I want to get to 60,000 subscribers by the end of the month. I don't think that's going to happen. Not unless you and your friends can help me out. That's two weeks away. Do you think we can do it? I think that's a bit of a stretch. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day. And we'll see you again soon. A lot of viewers like you have been reaching out to me asking how you can contact me via email, via text, via phone call, because you've got a question. You want to learn about something. You want to understand something about the trends in the camera industry, firmware updates, or you're looking at buying a new lens and a camera. Well, one of the problems I have is this channel has been growing and growing year after year, and now it's very difficult to respond to all the questions and comments that I receive. And you might have noticed over the past, what, three to six months that I haven't always responded to your comments or questions. And it's not because I don't value you as a viewer. It's just I only have so much time to look at the thousands of comments that I get every week. So what I've decided to, decided to do is to revamp the membership levels. The first level is max, and it's just 99 cents. It identifies you with a loyalty badge. And the color of that badge, it changes the longer you're a member. So when I go to see all the comments and I see your loyalty badge there, well, you're going to get priority over those that don't have a loyalty badge. Oh, and you also get these custom camera emojis that you can use when commenting. The ultra level at 299 gives you all the same perks as the max level, but it now gives you priority access to replies. So you might be wondering how this works. Well, quite simply, there's a function in the YouTube dashboard that allows me to see all the comments by ultra members. And so you get priority. I get to look at all your comments and questions first before taking a look at everybody else's comments and questions. But for some, maybe you have something that's a little bit more urgent and you actually want to give me a call, do a FaceTime or even text me. Well, then this option might be right for you. It's value priced at $24.99 and allows you to call me and reach out to me whenever you have a question. However, you can also text or email me or FaceTime me. And because I'm in meetings and shooting a lot, I highly recommend texting or emailing me ahead of time saying, hey, look, I got a question. Do you have any time today? And give me a bit of an idea of what you want to talk about, and we'll arrange a time. Let me know what you think about these membership options. As my channel continues to grow, we're almost on the verge of 60,000 subscribers. It's hard to believe. And it's becoming a whole lot harder to be well, responsive to your questions and comments. Some of my videos now are getting released at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning while I'm still asleep. And I'm doing this because the analytics tell me that, you know, it might be 2 or 3 in the morning here, but in Australia or Asia, people are just about to start their day or they're having lunch. And I don't believe that North America is the center of the universe. Depending on the video content, it gets released then. Some of them get released around 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or even at lunchtime, my time. So let me know what you think about these options in the comment section down below. I'll still continue to look at the general comments, but um, this is one way to better serve you, my loyal viewers who've been, some of you have been with me from the very beginning. And if you don't want to use any of these membership levels, don't worry. I'm still going to do my best to respond to your comments and questions. I just want to try to give you something a little bit extra. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day, a great week. And uh, don't forget to subscribe.